The Far Cry series is as synonymous with Ubisoft as the Rainbow Six, Assassin's Creed and Rayman series is, and it's one of their longest running franchises. But what is kind of surprising about it is that they didn't even develop the first game. The original Far Cry was instead developed by Crytek, who then went on to make Crisis in 2007, which was very similar in structure to Far Cry, along with being a computer melting tech demo. The first Far Cry game Ubisoft worked on was actually Far Cry Instincts, released for the Xbox in 2005, barely a year after the original came out. It's one of the four console exclusive Far Cry games, the second one being Far Cry Evolution, which got released in 2006. Hey, no fair. <laughs> and then they both got repackaged together for the third time with the so called graphically enhanced Far Cry Predator. Then what's even more confusing is that there's a remake of Evolution called Far Cry Vengeance for the Nintendo Wii, which we'll get to soon enough. Now, I've got all three versions. I've got Instincts and Evolution for the Xbox and Predator for the Xbox 360. And as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any major differences between the two outside of the visuals. So if simply for clarity in my footage, I opted to capture everything on the Xbox 360 instead. Your eyes are gonna thank me for it later, believe me. You do that for me? Instincts is an interesting game for a whole heap of reasons. Mostly though as a console exclusive that also happens to be a remake of the original game. Following along a similar plot but changing things up a bit to differentiate it. You're still playing as ex-Special Forces soldier Jack Carver, a mysterious and reclusive dude who's escorting a woman named Valerie Cortez to an island named Jackatan. And she's not there to get a suntan. Miss Cortez. Here's 200. Call it a bonus for getting me safely back to Pompeii. After Valerie heads off on her own, Jack then takes a nap because that's exactly what you do in a situation like that. He wakes up to find choppers circling his boat that pretty quickly open fire and then force him to flee onto the island. And if you've played the original, which I'm going to assume you have at this point, you know what happens next. Jack gets embroiled in a huge plot involving a mad scientist named Dr. Krieger who's creating a serum that's supposed to turn guys into super soldiers. Yeah, except it doesn't and it just makes them go crazy and turn them into monsters. Turns out that Valerie's an undercover CIA agent and along with Doyle, a scientist working for Krieger, it's up to the three of them to stop him along with his psychopathic right hand man named Crow. Well, it's up to Jack anyway. I mean, Valerie and Doyle just don't really do anything. Maybe she is off getting a suntan. Like I said before, it's a very similar story and I'm honestly fine with that, but it does seem like it's trying too hard to be edgy a lot of the time. Jack in the original felt like a walking trope, but in a good way. He was your typical one man army type of guy. You get the feeling he just wanted people to leave him the hell alone in general. I imagine he'd be the kind of guy hanging out in a bar on some tropical paradise, avoiding the IRS, drinking cheap beer and having sex with the local women who probably view his American accent as a bit of an aphrodisiac. Just keep your eyes on the jungle, Jack. Jack is still the same in instincts at face value, but without that much needed sense of self-awareness. It's like he's taking the character way too seriously. My brief was to extract oil by any means. That meant using a cover story in local transport. Right. And you and Doyle are what, cops? He's voiced by old mate Stephen Dorff, who's apparently a famous actor, though the only films I've ever seen him in was the first Blade movie and Space Truckers. Dennis Hopper. Stephen Dorff and Debbie Mazar. Fire it up! Space Truckers. Doyle now looks and sounds completely different too, and is now voiced by a guy named Mark Camacho, who's got some serious acting chops in video games. Valerie also seems to have taken a few edgy pills too, being much more of a cold, distant psychopath. Showing complete disregard for the lives of others and just outright murdering a guy at one point. I mean, what a bitch. I know. Far Cry felt like a dumb, schlocky action horror film with monkey mutants, a band of mercenaries, and a secret lab inside a volcano. Far Cry Instincts just feels like something else entirely, and it's lacking that sense of fun and wonderment of being in this hostile, incredibly unlikely tropical setting. Space Truckers. No better example of that, I think, is the soundtrack, which is that sort of generic mid 2000s overproduced metal music from countless video games at the time. Some of those tracks from the original game almost sound like something out of an old 80s horror film. Mm. 
Now, you can't really make fun of a game like this for how it looks. I mean, it originally came out on the Xbox, and comparing Xbox to the PC at the time, it's kind of like comparing a Bugatti Veyron to a Toyota Prius. But yeah, look, it definitely does look worse than the PC game. That goes without saying, even though I just said it. The lighting is still pretty decent though, and I like some of the ways they've tried to make some areas look more appealing with bloom and other visual effects. I think the water might actually look better than the PC version too, like it looks a lot more dynamic and less flat. But you will notice a downgrade in the texture quality and the modeling for the characters and weapons, especially the characters. Valerie looks positively last gen, and I can't even tell what the hell is going on here with Crow's face. Kind of carries across into the controls too, which are just complete rubbish, plagued by horrible aiming acceleration and aiming dead zones. It's just not very smooth, let's put it that way. One positive thing worth noting though is that it has a pretty solid frame rate. In fact, I don't think it really stuttered at all the entire time I played it, which is really saying something. I can put up with a game looking like smeared ass as long as it has a steady frame rate. A game that looks like smeared ass and chugs along worse than an arthritic marathon runner though? Look, I can't abide by that. I can't. I won't. I know. The variety to the levels is also pretty good. You'll be moving through a few generic looking jungle locations, but then there's also swamps, marshes, underground mines, secret labs, and some surprisingly good looking rivers. It's a Far Cry game visually, but it does lack that more open-ended nature from the first game. There's just really not all that much of an option to go away from where the game wants you to go. Just think of the whole thing as one very long corridor with lots of little distractions off to the side and you'll get the idea. One of the new mechanics they've added is that you can also lay traps down for enemies. Pull back a spiked branch and let some poor asshole walk into it, schwacking him instantly. <laughs> I mean, it is funny the first couple of times though, but then you'll probably just forget it exists. Which is what your parents have been trying to do with you for the last couple of years. Fuck you! But that's not the biggest change. The real difference Instincts has, and the one that people kept bringing up when they asked me to review this thing, was Jack's new abilities. <laughs> you see, a couple of hours into the game and you're caught by Krieger, and then you're injected with this kind of serum that gives Jack superpowers. At first, all this means is you can melee attack enemies and kill them in a single hit. Jack's gonna kind of lock onto an enemy, then launch in towards them and hit them with, I don't know, I guess his claws. And you'll hear this very cliche sound effect that sounds like someone pulling out a katana or something. By the end of the game, this is upgraded to the point that you'll actually launch enemies into the air and send them flying. And yeah, you know what? Credit where it's due, that is pretty funny to watch. Once you've got the serum coursing through your veins, you've also got to contend with an adrenaline meter, which is refilled by either waiting for it naturally, or picking up meal rations which are scattered all over the island. And the higher your adrenaline, the faster your health recharges. Yeah, now you've got your very own Wolverine style healing factor. So depending on how much adrenaline you've got though, this could mean the difference between healing yourself in 5 or 10 seconds, or 30 seconds. The next one you get is the ability to see the scent of enemies, which becomes really useful during some of the jungle levels, making it easier to see guys mulling about the bushes. After that, this mode gets upgraded, so that along with picking up someone's scent, you also get night vision mode. There's a scripted sequence too in a mine where you can use this to take out unsuspecting mercenaries, which makes you feel like the goddamn Batman. But sadly though, this is a one-off, because later in the game, in a similarly pitch black environment, the enemies can somehow see you. After that, you get Feral Speed. Now, this one's pretty cool. With this, you press the Y button on the controller, and then you can move really fast. With the screen having this motion blur effect to simulate Jack's movement speed. It's pretty awesome. Combined with this is a more powerful jump, done by holding down the jump button for a couple of seconds and releasing. It seems like a natural progression in terms of what kind of things Jack would acquire next, but it's not really fundamental or crucial to the gameplay. It'd be cool if it lets you outrun bullets, but it's really just a faster means of getting from point A to B. You can still pretty much play the remainder of the game without even using this thing, except during some key areas when you have to. And that's kind of the problem, is that outside of a few key levels, I just never really found myself using any of these. Occasionally, if someone got too close to me, I'd go for the melee kill, but more often than not, you take so much damage before the hit connects that you're better off just shooting them in the face and calling it a day. Speaking of the shooting, another new mechanic is the option to dual wield weapons. In Far Cry 1, you had four slots for weapons, now in Instincts, it's three. And these are broken up into categories. You've got light for pistols, medium for submachine guns, the shotgun and assault rifle, and then heavy for the sniper rifle and the rocket launcher. 
It's the pistols and submachine guns which can be dual wielded though, which makes them a lot more effective at the cost of chewing through ammo way faster. And I guess the other downside is that you can't throw grenades anymore, as your left hand is now used to hold the weapon instead. Still, I sure do like me some good old fashioned dual wielding. Sadly, like the original game though, the enemy AI in this thing is pretty much non-existent. The only thing the enemies are good at is shooting you, and even then, they often struggle with that a fair bit. Mostly, they'll just stand in one place at a distance, or start rushing towards your position. I mean, there's a bit of self-preservation if you throw a grenade at their feet, but they're really not that mobile. I mean, look at this asshole here. He was even kind enough to wait in line for me to murder his two buddies before he then stepped in front of my crosshairs. Can you believe too that there's actually people who defend the AI in these games as well? No, really, I've conversed with them. They exist. Some of the mercenaries you encounter later in the game are really aggressive and armed with assault rifles, throwing grenades you often won't even see coming, but you can just kind of fall back and let them come to you, so it's not that much of an issue. Like I said, the challenge just comes from the fact that the enemies are basically hit-scanning aimbotters, and they're super accurate at medium to close range. The only time you'll die though is if you're blindsided. I gotta say though, Instincts is still just an asshole of a game and it has a campaign that often seems to lack any kind of thought or consideration for the player's time. Like Far Cry, the checkpoints in this thing are incredibly inconsistent. Sometimes you get a checkpoint every couple of minutes. Other times you'll head up the river in a jet ski, take out a couple of outposts and a chopper and get jack shit. Some of the levels in this game just go on and on, but not really at the expense of them being any more interesting or engaging. They just feel drawn out and boring. Like someone's taken a rubber band and stretched it out as long as they could. And because the checkpoints can be so few and far between, it's like every time you die, that rubber band has snapped back and hit you right in the eye. One of the last levels in the game honestly took me close to two hours to get through, and it wasn't like I was dying over and over. I mean, I wasn't exactly speed running but I moved at a pretty brisk pace, and yeah, two hours. It's just not necessary, and this is the same thing the original game did too. It just had these bloated levels that went on way longer than they needed to. Instead of fighting the Trigen, the closest thing we get this time is these green mutant looking dudes, who wander around like complete idiots, and remind me a fair bit of that zombie from the beginning of Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> Oh yeah, and check out the faces on these guys too. Kinda looks like what'd happen if a pedophile got third degree burns. Or as the edgy penguin on Twitter called him, Sunburnt Voldemort. As well as that, it seems like the whole game is set on like Jurassic Park or something. Because now there's those little frill neck lizard dinosaur things that run around and spit their own piss at you. And check out this gate and fence too, it looks like it's taken right out of the film. The last few levels are some of the worst things ever designed by another human being, and they actually make me pray for a nuclear winter. The first in this trifecta of trash is the Dead Marshes, which is an almost pitch black swamp you have to navigate, avoiding droves of shrieking kamikaze mutants that come out of literally nowhere. When you really want someone to hate your game, just include an escort quest or kamikaze enemies. Luckily for this level, you get an upgraded Feral Vision mode, which also shows enemy positions through solid objects. And yeah, you're gonna spend the rest of the game using this Vision mode, because for some reason, these last few levels are really dark. It's like looking into the butthole of a chimney sweep. During this level, you've got to fight one of these giant mutants, which isn't too bad, it's just that the area you fight it in is pretty narrow. To make it even worse and bring my piss to a boil, they make you fight not only one, but two of them again at the end of the level, which is just lazy. And I swear these ones have more health points than the others. Like at one point I had to stop shooting them to go and get more ammo from a little hut nearby. The next level is more of the same. Though at least now you can see a little bit better as it seems the sun is starting to rise. But it all goes to hell when yet again you fight another mutant boss. This time in a small greenhouse where there's barely any enough room to move. Yeah, so have fun with that, fighting this big asshole inside a room the size of a matchbox. They manage to top themselves at the end of this level when you've got to then escort Doyle to a chopper. And what did I say before about escort quests? The final level, again like Far Cry's final level, is another gauntlet through a volcano where both the mutants and the mercenaries are usually too distracted fighting each other to attack the player, allowing you to thankfully run past most of it. One of the few times that Feral Speed actually came in handy. If I bought the game when it first came out though, I'd probably be using my Feral Speed in real life to get a refund. 
anyway. Once you make it through this dimly lit barrage of bullshit, you're finally at the final fight against Krieger and Crow, who is protected by his own personal harem of mutants who are somewhat more intelligent and self-aware. Well, at least they don't look like Freddy Krueger's nutsack. The final fight against Crow though is just so unfun that I have to assume it was designed either by an alien who's trying to replicate human behavior, or an actual human who just phoned the whole thing in. It's a small cordoned off area where Crow sits atop a nearby cliff with a machine gun and hides behind rocks with swarms of mutants dropping in to shoot at you. It's honestly one of the worst things I've ever experienced in a video game and it's one of the lamest boss fights of all time. And they just made sure that his machine gun does insane damage as a lame attempt to make this thing more difficult. When he finally goes down, you confront Krieger and assert your dominance over his remaining mutants who then suddenly turn on him and rip him to shreds, where it turns out his insides are pretty much entirely liquid. For the finale, you escape the island in a chopper with Val and Doyle, flying off into the sunrise. And Jesus Christ, look at Jack's face. Like, what the hell is going on with those eyes? It's nightmare fuel. I know. Amazingly, when this thing came out, it even got pretty positive reviews from critics, getting an 85 on Metacritic, which I'm honestly stunned about. The definite highlights are Jack's feral abilities, but the adrenaline system and the often lack of meal rations to keep it stocked up diminish how fun it really should have been. And the archaic nature of the checkpoints and the drawn out level design just made this one a chore to get through. Shit. So what did they follow it up with? Well, they followed it up with Far Cry Evolution in 2006, with a brand new single player campaign following on from the events of Instinct. I was afraid you were gonna say that. Like I said earlier, this thing even came out the same day as Predator did for the Xbox 360, just again making these Xbox versions kind of redundant. It starts off with a pretty hectic chase scene where Jack is racing away from a bunch of pirates before it then cuts back a few days before, when he meets some filly in a bar named Cade and ends up getting laid and even a job out of it. Nice. I need help with something. Something dirty? And I gotta say that nothing beats mid-2000s video game TNA. Are you complaining? Anyway, back to the point. Cade's keen to get Jack hired to protect her during an arms deal with the Micronesian government, and it seems to be working, only suddenly during the deal, they're attacked by rebels who all have the same abilities as Jack. Teaming up with old mate Doyle, the three of them track down the leader of the rebels, Semeru, along with killing every pirate that gets in their way. I don't care, Doyle. Seeing how average instincts was, you'd probably think that this one's pretty crappy too. Well... Actually, it's the complete opposite. Oh Evolution is so fucking fun. If Instincts was Stallone in Rambo First Blood, well, Evolution is Arnie in Commando. No more of the sneaking around jungles at night time. Now you're pulling a goddamn grenade launcher off its emplacement and storming headfirst into a group of bad guys. Someone at Ubisoft took their daily dose of fun pills when making this thing, let me tell ya. And it's not even like it even changes all that much stuff up, it just makes some minor improvements. For starters, you've got all of Jack's abilities from the get-go, the feral attack, the speed, and the vision modes. So right away, you can just go ham on these poor unsuspecting pirates, and it is great fun. Yeah, see you later, alligator. Instead of those meal rations, now you get to eat these white flowers to get your adrenaline back, and these are a lot more common, allowing you to utilize these powers far more frequently. It's like someone figured it out that the discerning feature of the game, and the one thing that makes it more fun to play, is something that should be able to be implemented more frequently. The first level in the game actually feels like a proper Far Cry level. You've got to go back and forth between three different islands to accomplish three different objectives, and you can do them in any way you want. Drive a jet ski through these shallow canals, or use your feral speed to jump across bridges and gaps. It's awesome. There's an actual sense of freedom and open-endedness, instead of just always moving down an endless jungle-looking corridor. Checkpoints are also much more common as well, so you don't have to spend too much time replaying sections over and over if you get unlucky and suffer an instant death from a grenade or rocket launcher. There's no new guns, but there is new throwable weapons in the form of a very Terminator-inspired looking pipe bomb that can even demolish sniper towers, as well as a Molotov cocktail. Classic. I don't know man, maybe the fact that I started playing this right after finishing Instincts made Evolutions look so much better in comparison, but I just had an absolute blast playing through this, and I don't know what to tell you. Are you complaining? Instead of each level feeling like a chore or a slog, I was actually looking forward to whatever the game threw at me next. 
I mean, it's not all perfect, and there's a few lame areas here and there. I mean, the end level is definitely one of the weakest, but even then, evolution at its worst is preferable to instincts at its best. Levels don't go on for hours either. They're concise and tightly structured, but also without feeling short. They say brevity is the soul of wit. Yeah, well, brevity is the soul of good level design, which translates to don't waste my time with your stupid long-ass levels. It's interesting too because there's a whole lot of similarities in this game you can make to Far Cry 3. For starters, you've got the whole pirate faction as a main enemy force, similar to Vast and his pirates. The tribal element to the storyline with Samiro and his rebels is also kind of similar to the Rakyat. If you come to the mainland, I will tear you to shreds. And you could argue that the abilities that Jack learns kind of mirrors the upgrades that Jason gets in Far Cry 3. And yeah, how's that too? Both characters have a name that starts with J. Damn straight. One level has you moving through an eerie area of the jungle where you start having these weird hallucinations and visions, which again mirrors some of the hallucination sequences that have sort of become the norm in the later games. You collect plants in both games. Two on one mission even has you burning down a plantation, similar to that one in Far Cry 3 that also violated your ears with the sound of Skrillex taking a dump. Yeah, Skrillex, remember that guy? Also, this version of Doyle is working for the CIA, similar to Willis Huntley from Far Cry 3, who was another corrupt, shady undercover CIA operative. If you rearrange the letters in Willis Huntley, you can also spell the word willies. Doyle and Willis are both men, and men have willies. Coincidence? I think not. Sounds huge. The only downside is that the frame rate in this one suffers more than a one-armed taxi driver with a dick rash, which is probably because a lot of the levels are bigger in size, so you can expect to see things chugging along a fair bit. This mostly happens when you're driving vehicles like jeeps and jet skis, but you know what, it's really not all that bad, and it's stable most of the time. It never affected my ability to shoot someone in the face, and that's all that matters. Another thing I really loved about this game was the soundtrack. It's awesome. I mean, I can't even remember a single song I liked from Instincts, but I frequently found myself enjoying the background music in Evolution. Evolution is also a much shorter game. If this was released in the late 90s or early 2000s, well, this thing would have been released as an expansion pack. To me, it's like a much needed dessert after eating a meal that was overcooked and left in the oven too long. Playing through this after Instincts felt like I was leaving an abusive relationship. It takes all the best parts from Instincts and condenses it all down into a campaign that's roughly half the length. Instincts had 11 levels, right? Evolution has five. But the difference in enjoyment and value I got from each of them is like night and day. I'd even consider replaying this and you wouldn't even have to hold me at gunpoint. I'd replay this for, you know, fun. Yeah, shocking. Are you in? Yeah. Now, I understand that some people might have played Instincts before they ever played the original Far Cry, and look, if that's your situation, well, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with someone's nostalgia factor, and look, I'd be a bit of a hypocrite if I did. Where it all really goes to shit, though, and the game I'm sure we can all agree is a goddamn train wreck is Far Cry Vengeance which was released exclusively for the Nintendo Wii, also in 2006. Far Cry Vengeance. Like I said before, this is an alternate version of Evolution, even defined as a remake, which I don't agree with, because most of the game is just copy-pasted across from the Xbox 360 version, so I don't really think that remake is the right term for it. Story-wise, you're still working alongside Cade, but instead of picking her up in a bar, she just hires you and then she takes off. Meet me at the marina later, if you're up to it. It's a little past my bedtime, but I'm game. Don't keep me waiting. Before you're then punched in the face by a couple of cops, taken prisoner and hauled away. Followed by an interrogation that has one of the single greatest lines in video game history. How long have you been with the rebels? I'm not that kind of rebel, pal. I'm not your pal, you bastard guy. Soon after that, the rebels, led by the returning antagonist, Sumeru, attack the prison. You escape during the confusion during the game's obligatory tutorial level, and then reunite with Kate again to help her out with that arms deal. This time though, instead of the rebels ambushing the arms deal with the government, now the rebels are the ones you're doing the arms deal with, and they just turn on you because, I don't know, they're a pack of assholes. <laughs> Later on as well, instead of working with Doyle, you're now working with another guy who fills his place named Kian Do. I guess this is my day for easy choices. Otherwise, it's mostly the same, aside from a few unique levels, like this opening, which introduces some new weapons, like a Bull 44 revolver and an SMG. 
Later on, there's a new level where you've got to steal a plane with Cade and protect it as it moves down the runway. Then shoot down a chopper later on using the turret of an APC. Made trickier because of just how bad Cade's driving is. Huh, women drivers, huh? I'll take that as a yes. Removing Doyle though makes this new Key and Doe character just completely pointless. Like there's no attachment or connection to this guy and his fate is utterly meaningless. Also, they somehow made Sumeru even more underdeveloped as well by outright removing some of the key cinematics he appeared in. And I never thought I'd say it, but I kind of miss hearing Stephen Dorff voicing Jack Carver. Relation. Jesus, I barely got to first base before you crashed my party. They somehow found someone even more drab and monotone than him this time around, if that was even possible. Okay. First, we gotta get out of here in one piece. Vengeance has also been modified to suit the Wii controller, and look, anyone who's played the Wii knows how gimmicky some of those games are. Vengeance is no exception. Moving and shooting is pretty basic. You've got the thumbstick on the nunchuck to move forward and backward and strafe left to right, and the remote to aim your weapons and fire, which controls a lot like playing VR games. This control scheme actually isn't all that bad. It's gotten a lot of negativity, but truthfully, it's not as horrible as people make it out to be. The only thing is that turning and aiming up or down quickly can be a real pain in the sphincter because of how slow it is. It's the other controls though that suck a dead dog's nutsack. To melee attack, you swipe up or down with the controller, which just makes you look like you're hiccuping. To jump, you quickly thrust up with the nunchuck, which is as clunky as it sounds. Oh, and the best one, to zoom in with a weapon, you thrust the controller forward like you're trying to stab the air in front of you. And to zoom out, you stab it backwards. Too bad there's no controls to stab my wrists in game, so I don't have to keep playing. The way they fucked around with the feral powers though is even worse. In Evolution, you started off with all of Jack's abilities from the get-go, which I thought was one of the key differences that made that game better than Instincts. In Vengeance, they spit all over that. You have to go through that whole rigmarole of getting these powers all over again throughout the campaign. Instead of an adrenaline meter that's always recharging, now you've got a predator meter that charges up by making kills. And when it's full, and only when it's full, you can then activate predatorain mode. Yeah, predatorain. Sounds like something you'd clean a toilet with. <laughs> There's no ration packs or white flowers either. You're now totally reliant on kills to charge this thing up. When it's activated, you get access to Jack's feral claws and increased movement speed. Staggered throughout the campaign, you'll also eventually unlock the feral jump, feral vision, and a new stealth kill that makes it look like Jack just used his hands to wipe an enemy's ass. <laughs> but these are all pretty much linked to this predator rain meter. So being able to use these abilities whenever you'd want to, which, you know, would actually be fun, has just totally been removed. Yeah, thanks for that. The worst one though is that Jack's regenerating health only works during the predator rain mode. So now you've got to instead use your meter to refill your health in small increments. How do you do this you ask? Well, by swapping the nunchuck to the side quickly because yeah, that makes sense. This is easily the worst one though because it means you can go long periods without having any means to heal yourself. And a lot of the combat sequences in Evolution were designed around Jack's healing ability to be used as a crutch. So now without it, well, you're really up shit creek. Yeah, and speaking of shit creek, this game definitely looks like it. Shit, that is. Playing this on the Nintendo Wii right after playing Evolution, it makes Evolution look like Crisis 3 in comparison. It's not good. It's like comparing a console game to one of those weird versions you'd get on a Tiger handheld. The FMVs are so compressed that you can count the amount of pixels on two hands, and the whole thing runs in a 4x3 ratio, which isn't helping either. The more I played, my eyes even started to get sore from having to use extra brain power to try and figure out what was happening. There was even talk of this thing soft locking people's consoles. I mean, if the migraine inducing visuals weren't enough of a detriment. It also stutters really badly and you'll see a heap of texture and environment pop in. Some of the sections when you drive a vehicle are pretty much unplayable. Now I know people say it a lot and it's a bit of a cliche statement, but it really did look last gen. Even for 2006 when it came out, it was bad. I mean, Evolution sure didn't look amazing, but it definitely looks better than this. And that's the whole point, isn't it? Vengeance is really just a worse off version of Evolution. From the presentation and performance, arguably the story through to the gameplay, there's just no real reason to play it. I just can't imagine anyone would be in this kind of scenario where they'd need to play Vengeance instead, it just wouldn't happen. If you're someone who had to play this because you didn't own an Xbox 360, well, then my heart goes out to you. And all I can say is, look, your parents don't love you. This crappiness was also reflected in reviews at the time. GameSpot gave it a 5 out of 10, IGN gave it a 4, and it's easily one of, if not the lowest scoring game in the entire series. 
There's a reason only one Far Cry game ever made its way to a Nintendo console, and you're looking at it right now. It has been my pleasure. The series has been going on for so long now and it's been through so many iterations that it's definitely started to get a bit muddled. But these early ones are still interesting I think because you can see the aspects in these three games that they've sort of taken across into the newer titles. Out of all of these games I'd say that Evolution is by far the best. And though I do hate remakes, it's one game that I think could genuinely benefit from one. Bringing across those mechanics that originally worked and polishing them up a bit more. If nothing else though, these are worth checking out to see what the series was like before it just turned into taking over outposts, climbing radio towers and stealing everything that's not bolted down. And look, I guarantee you'll never play another game where an NPC calls you a bastard guy either. You bastard guy!